My first guests know only too well the high cost of addiction. Now they're helping others find out just how to get out of that well of despair. She's a nationally known TV host. He's one of the all-time legends of baseball. Would you welcome, please, Tracy and Daryl Strawberry. Great having you guys here. Thanks for having me. Daryl, I want to start with you. I mean, you're a guy, you had it all. Fame, fortune, popularity. To this day, one of the most famous and beloved people in all of New York City, which says a lot because they don't like many people up there. That's right. So that's pretty, pretty <laughs> impressive. W when people see a person who has everything, all the fame and all the extraordinary talents of sports, first question, both how and why would you ever get into substance abuse? Well, that's a good question. I mean, most people would ask that question too, you know, but they don't really understand where a person comes from. They don't understand a person's life, household, brokenness. Uh, they don't really realize that that's real. Lawlessness brings about brokenness and people end up broken regardless. See, I ended up with a uniform on because I was in pain. Hmm. And my pain would lead me to my greatness uh, because my father was an alcoholic and he beat the crap out of me and said I'd hmm. never amount to nothing. Came home, pulled out a shotgun, said he was gonna kill the whole family when I was 14 years old. Oh. So no one ever knows what happens in the home. We can all hmm. pretend that it's good because it, when we walk out of the home, but we don't know if the home's on fire inside. And my home was on fire inside when I was a kid. So I decided to be great. I just told myself I'm gonna focus on baseball and I'm gonna become great. I'm gonna make millions of dollars and I'm gonna take care of my mother. And, and that's what I did. But at the same time, I, was, I still had the issues inside and I never got a chance to deal with my real issues. The uniform just covered up who I was. What was it that, that triggered you to say, yeah, I'm gonna try drugs when somebody hands that to me? Well, I, I think in a celebrity life, you know, most people would think you don't need anything. They don't really understand. When you're at the top, it's really lonely hmm. and it's really empty because I only have a bunch of stuff. Stuff is not gonna make you well. It doesn't define who you are. And I think a lot of times we say, well, if I had a little bit more of this, a little bit more celebrity status, most people, if you probably had a little bit more celebrity status, you might kill yourself hmm. in that celebrity status because you, you start realizing that the attention that you're drawing is not real attention. It's not people really loving you. It's people want to be around you because of who you are and how successful you are. You know, I was very successful in my mind as a baseball player when I put the uniform on. I was just a baseball player. And it wasn't what anyone wanted me to try. I was already smoking marijuana when I was 14, the marijuana maintenance, hmm. when I was 14 years old. And that led me down the road to everything else because eventually that stops working. Then you try everything else. And then you get into the professional life and everything is right at your hand when you're a celebrity. There's no no's. You can do whatever you want, however you want. Because people whatever. want to accommodate your every request. You know, it's interesting to me, I think about you, you were already experimenting with drugs long before baseball, but you ended up with four World Series rings and all these accolades. You ever sat back and said, I wonder what kind of guy I would have been without all that stuff? No, I, I realized, you know, I had to go the journey I had to go on. And what I realized that putting on a uniform and, and winning championships and making millions of dollars, I was a baseball player. Hmm. That just, that's all it was. It didn't make me a man. And it wasn't until I met my wife and she made me realize, if you want to become a man, you've got to take the uniform off. And I never heard that. And once I took that uniform off, I became a man of purpose, a man of integrity, a man of character. Tracy, you and Daryl, I understand, actually met in rehab. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Most of the time you say, oh, I met somebody at rehab. That ain't a story. It's not a good uh, recipe. You know, it's, it's not usually the fairy tale. We don't recommend that. Yeah, because, you know, most people wouldn't say, yeah, that's the place to meet people is to, you know, go to rehab. Why has it worked for you guys? <laughs> And, and it obviously has. It's a great question. And we met actually at a recovery convention. And it's, there is a common safety that's not so safe. You, you're drawn together from your experience, number one. And you feel safe there in this unsafe place. But why it works for us today is because we've completely surrendered our lives to Jesus Christ, but we've also participated in the process of change, completely turning away from the old life. When you talk about addiction, Governor, you talk about one word that has so many legs underneath it. You're talking about spirit, soul, and body. You're talking about we are separated from God and we are enslaved to sin because we are powerless over the sinful nature. Romans chapter seven teaches us that. There's a physical component, it's a brain disease. There's emotional issues that go on inside of a person. 
All of these things need to be ministered to. It takes time, it takes love, it takes compassion. There's a whole lot that needs to be poured into an individual. Just saying you, you need Jesus is not enough. Yes, we do need Jesus, but we need to lead people, love them, and disciple them into what that means. We have to get back to educating people about the biblical principles and discipling people. And the Bible talks about it, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. There's no knowledge and understanding of the word. Uh, that's why people perish, and that's the reason why I was perishing, because I was successful. I still was dying in my sin. Hmm. It wasn't until I got myself to an understanding and, and, and a place to, to understand God's Word and start reading and dissecting it for myself and saturating myself in God's Word for myself. And most people won't do that. That's why they won't get the revelation. Daryl and Tracy are going to stay with us for our next segment, and we're going to be joined by a top medical professional from Liberty University who will give her perspective on overcoming addictions. Very powerful. Don't miss it, because I'm going to tell you something. There's not a family in America, nobody, who has not been touched very closely. Mother, father, son, daughter, brother, sister, every family has been touched. So don't go away. 